Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. By the late Oligocene, Europe's climate was beginning to shift once again. Changing oceanic currents, as well as the gradual closure of the Tethys Sea, drew increasing levels of moisture towards the continent. This led to heavier rainfall and a concomitant increase in overall humidity, leading to the spread of subtropical forests comparable to those in modern Southeast Asia. Climatic conditions were similar to modern India, with a mixture of semi-arid open scrubland, humid subtropical forests and dry bushland. Animal faunas remained dominated by genre of Asian origin, with only a few exceptions. Humid forests were gradually beginning to spread northward, moving away from the coasts where they had been confined during the early stages of the period. Although these changes were more pronounced during the Miocene, their beginnings lay in the late Oligocene. European fossil locales from the end of the period are not as rich as those from Quercy, with only a small number of sites having been both located and properly examined. One of the best known of these, albeit in less detail than we would like, is the Carascosa del Campo site of Cuenca, Spain. Dating to the late Oligocene roughly 23.5 million years ago, the overall number of genera recovered here is rather low, with fossil remains being scrappy and poorly preserved. Continuities with earlier Oligocene locales in France and Germany are apparent, and the presence of African-derived animals, which would typify the early Miocene, are not yet present. The site represents a typical example of a seasonally dry open savanna ecosystem, with a dense woodland surrounding inland waterways. The Titanosaur Ebro Titan was the largest herbivore present, known from several disarticulated specimens. Measuring up to 18 metres long and weighing roughly 20 tonnes, the animal was a high-browsing herbivore that likely travelled across the landscape in small herds. Ebrotitan albigensis was the youngest species, with the genus dying out at the Miocene boundary. Once fully grown, they would have had few natural predators, while juveniles would have been the main target of the larger abelisaurs that prowled the continent. However, the only abelisaur present at the site is represented only by a handful of teeth. These are identifiable to the 7 metre genus Ronde Draco, which is known from more complete material elsewhere in Europe. All smaller carnivores were members of Dromaeosauria, with three Boreoraptorids of varying size. The smallest of these, at only 2 metres long, was Navaraptor, a slender ambush hunter of lizards and mammals. The same genus is also known from Oligocene sites in France. In the middle, at 3.5 metres long, was Typhoraptor, and, at an impressive 6 metres, was Galiciaraptor. The latter was a robust, heavy-clawed predator endemic to Spain during the Oligocene, but spreading to France and Germany during the Miocene. The presence of oviraptorosaurs and troodontans is suggested by tiny fragments of bone, too small to provide placement within any particular genus. Five genera of ornithischians were present. The smallest and most common of these was the dorsodontid Laurentinodon, again also known from contemporary sites in France. This was an adaptable browser adapted for speed, and would have formed the main prey base for the larger dromaeosaurs with which it shared its environment. Its tondiodontid cousin, the 3 metre Cervesosaurus, was better adapted to a mixed feeding niche, capable of both browsing and grazing. The teeth were numerous and file-like, while its paired squamosal horns curved upward and to the sides, giving the animal an almost devilish appearance. Two ceratopsians inhabited the region, the pan-European Beroceratops and the sylviceratopsid Bonelliceratops. The former was 2.5 metres long and rather gracile, feeding on tough, low-growing vegetation while the latter was a 4 metre forest dweller with a distinctive flattened neck frill that swept back over the body. Perhaps the most interesting ornithischian discovered here was a European old endemic, the orthomerid hadrosauromorph franciscosaurus. This large 9 metre herbivore was highly unusual in a number of ways, foremost among these being its greatly elongated and narrow skull. The beak at the tip was flattened and square in shape when seen from above, Alter Earth paleontologists are still debating the function of the animal's jaws, with most recent studies pointing to a diet comprised mostly of aquatic plants. The postcranial skeleton is also unusual in being robust and bulky. It would seem that, due to increasing competition with incoming Asian competitors, 
The ortho marriage took to drastic measures in order to survive in a fast-changing ecosystem. This suite of specialisations would serve the genus well during the wetter and more humid Miocene of Europe. Aside from dinosaurs, the only other animals recovered from the Caracosta del Campo were mammals. These include the Kimolomyid multituberculate Golomys, a tiny mouse-like granivore with a broad Eurasian distribution and roughly a dozen species. There was also the herbivorous glirungulate Logronotherium that filled a somewhat rabbit or pica-like role in the ecosystem, and the omnivorous nocturnal tylocerichoid placental Isidorodon. Hunting these small critters was the acerictid metatherian Gonzalo Delphis, an agile semi-arboreal hypercarnivore the size of a domestic cat. Thanks for watching everyone. Next episode will deal with the evolutionary history of the abelisaurs. So I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.